good day my name is john melroy fernandez lecturer at department of interior design and decoration milagris college mangalore so today we are going to study about the topic called as manufacturing process of portland cement so usually there are two processes involved one is dry process and wet process so out of these two process whatever the output we get that is known as your portland cement the selection of process for manufacturing of cement depend upon the nature of raw materials so depending upon the nature of the raw materials is it hard or is it soft so depending upon the nature of the raw materials the wet process or the dry process are chosen so if the raw material is hard then the dry process is normally preferred whereas if raw material is soft then wet process is preferred so other than the raw material the factors like consumption of fuel availability of raw material the climate of the factory place are also considered for the selection of the process involved in the manufacturing of cement so when the material we get it is hard then the dry process is used for the calcareous rocks kind of material so that time the dry process is used but if the material is soft then the wet process is used preferred so other than the nature of the raw material the factors like consumption of fuel so how much fuel it will take for the process it might be a dry process or it might be a wet process so how much fuel does it take so do we have the income for that fuel so do we have to invest so much for that fuel so depending upon that the dry process or the wet process is decided so next the availability of raw material so right now the material which is available is very hard so we use the dry process so in future we might get the material which is soft so that time we may have to switch from dry process to the wet process next the climate of the factory place are also considered for the selection of the process for manufacturing of cement so where if i choose a dry process but the factory place is factory is placed where the area is having more humidity or we can tell the more rain so that time the dry process will get affected by it so we'll have to switch it for the wet process next so normally for both the process wet or the dry process we'll have certain rules and major operations like selection of raw materials so selection of raw materials should be done in proper quantity proper proportional quantity and the fine powder fine powdered quantity so next the crushing and grinding so here the raw material which is taken that is made into a pulverized form which is the powdered form of the raw material next the powdered the pulverized output is then stored that is known as the storage of slurry so this these three steps comes under the mixing of raw materials next the burning the ground mix in the rotary kiln so ground mix is nothing but the slurry the output which we get from the raw material by crushing and grinding process so the ground mix which we get that is sent to a rotary kiln so rotary kiln is nothing but a cylinder which is placed diagonally so whatever the output we get that is entered into the rotary kiln so after that when it enters into the rotary kiln since the cylinder is diagonally placed the entire rotary kiln is heated up with the various temperatures so the output we get as the clinkers the hot clinkers that is in uh, which will go on taking uh, certain chemical reactions so the next process is cooling of hot clinkers so in cooling of hot clinkers whatever the uh output we get it from the burning process that is cooled in the cooling process and then 
the grinding of the clinkers is done. So, this both process comes under the grinding process. The next, the seventh step is storage and packing. Here, the packing of the final product, the clinkers is taken place. So, next we come to the dry process. In this process, the raw materials are crushed in a crushers into small pieces. So, here the raw material for the dry process, we get the material is very hard. So, it has to be crushed into and made into a small pieces. Further, these are ground in fine powder if by the help of the ball mills and then stored separately. So, whatever the raw material, we get it, the hard materials from the calcareous rocks that are put into a crushers and made into a small pieces and then further they are ground again ground into a fine powder by the help of the ball mills and stored separately. The next process, the mixed, they are mixed in proper proportions. So, all these uh, rocks are mixed in proper proportion and pulverized in a tube mills. Pulverized is uh, nothing but making it into a powdered form and homogenized in a mixture. Homogenized in the sense it is making in a one form or one phase. So, mixing mill with the help of the compressed air. So, here there is not, uh, we do not have the large number of air, it is just a compressed air. So, due to, th due to that the moisture content present in it, the process takes place. This is called a dry raw mix and it is then storage, stored in a storage bins called as silos and are kept ready to fed in a rotary clean where it undergoes certain chemical reaction and we get the output as cement, Portland cement. Next process is wet process. So, in this process, the materials are finely ground and blended in the required proportions and stored in a big storage tanks known as silos. So, here the whatever the material we get, it is soft, it is soft material. In, uh, instead of calcareous rocks, here we use it is argillaceous material. So, that is soft, for example, shells, shale, clay, etc. Okay. So, here in this process, the materials are finely ground. So, only one ground, only one time it is grounded and then for the next process, it is blended in the required proportions. So, blended in the required proportions. Next point, the argillaceous materials is thoroughly mixed with water for washing to remove organic matter if any of it remains and then stored. So, whatever the argillaceous materials we get from the nature that is filled with organic matter so, that has to be washed out to get the pure content of the Portland cement. So, if the organic matter uh, is present in the cement, then the, it will result in the poor qu quality of the Portland cement. Next, the powdered limestone and washed wet clay are allowed to flow in the proportioning tank. So, only the soft material which we get in the process is not enough for the manufacturing of Portland cement. So, we will have to add certain amount of limestone. So, which the limestone is a hard material. So, certain amount of limestone has to be added. So, the limestone, the amount of limestone and the amount of the argillaceous material which is, uh, which we get as a output in a wet process. So, that should maintain the same proportion. The pulverized, the powdered limestone and washed with wet clay are allowed to flow in the proportioning tank. So, whatever the product we get from the wet process that is argillaceous material. So, that is very soft which is not enough for the cement process. So, the certain amount of limestone is added. So, the amount of limestone content for example, it should be from 60 to 67 percentage and the minimum percentage of limestone is 50 percentage. So, it, if the percentage of limestone and the argillaceous material is not mixed properly, 
then it will result in a failure product. So, this is how we studied about the manufacturing process of Portland cement. Yes. Thank you.